I was sitting back down to play some Factorio, and uh, we have today's update. The, uh, the Friday Facts, number 432, Aquila. So, uh, hello team, it's time to reveal the last planet. So warning, spoils are, spoilers ahead, read the full post on our website. And clicking this link, it takes us directly over to Factorio's website, where we get to learn about Aquila. So warning, spoilers ahead, all that jazz. If you want to stay in the dark for the DLC, like I know many of us do, but I'm not one of those people. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Aquilo. It's day, but stars twinkle in the dark sky. You count the planet's sun among the stars, larger and brighter than the others, but still so dim you can barely feel its warmth at all. A howling wind chills you to the bone and gently rocks the iceberg you're sitting on. The planet has no land. It's an ocean world full of liquid ammonia. One continuous ocean covers the entire planet, and it's at least 200 kilometers deep. The best landing spot you could find was on this large iceberg. A sheet of ice is only a few meters thick and seems to contain a lot of trapped air. But frozen water is a very solid material as long as it stays cold. It's able to support a landing pad, so that's good enough. You sit on the edge of the ice, watching the snow fall. It gracefully deposits, it deposits itself on your frozen machines. Assembling machines, chemical plants, transport belts, and ins uh, inserters, all frozen in place, unable to move. In the distance, you spot columns of teal gas, fluorine, bubbling up from the depths. It's one of the resources you're here for, but out of reach for now. There seems to be plenty of oil, most likely from microorganisms in the core. Making fuel on site shouldn't be a problem as the refinery is unfrozen. You take the time to plan your next moves, collecting ice from the surrounding ocean to extend the platform, heating towers to warm your buildings, heat pipes to move that heat around, and, con uh, and concrete to make sure the heat doesn't melt the ice. The thought of running heat pipes through your designs is starting to make your head spin, but it's okay. Don't panic. The one thing you have to do, or the one thing you do have on this planet, is time. A flurry of shooting stars distracts you for a moment. You can't help but wonder if there are little meteorites burning up in the atmosphere, or the remaining parts of the space platform that dropped you here. The space platform barely made it to this planet and never made it out of orbit. You got, uh, you got out just in time. Hopefully, a replacement platform will be here soon, if it survives. There's a clunking sound behind you as the landing pad opens its hatch. You turn to see a formation of cargo pods descending through the atmosphere. It is time to build. There we go. Yeah, it's it's always so cool. Factorio does such... The dev team does such a wonderful job of bringing that like satisfying feeling of playing Factorio to life. And really does a wonderful job showcasing the atmosphere of these worlds. I've been excited for this DLC for a while. And the slow trickle of information we've been getting has been such a fun tease. Yeah, these pods land, the heat pipes start spreading around, everything starts coming at coming alive. It's cool that we're actually gonna have another use for heat pipes, other than just nuclear reactors, you know. I know you could use them for those, but like, come on. It's so cool. And you can see he has almost all of the heat pipes on top of concrete and brick. It really does beg the question for me, what happens if uh, you melt through the ice that your buildings are on? Will they just get destroyed? So, a liquid planet. Aquilo doesn't have any land. It has a few icebergs floating around, but the building space is very restricted. If you use an offshore pump in the... Um, um, Ammoniacal ocean, you don't get water, you mostly get liquid ammonia, but with some ice particles floating in it. You can separate these in a chemical plant. These substances have a variety of uses, but among them is the ability to make an ice platform. Ice platform allows you to extend the iceberg and extend your build area. Making ice platform can be a slow process, so it's good to scale this process while you have spare energy and heat. Heat is the next big mechanic, and it's a wonderful twist to the way that you build. Most things on Aquila will freeze if they're not heated. A collection of frozen machines. So we got your labs, your assembling machines, your oil refinery, your radar, even pumps, belts. 
Uh, I guess it'll it'll freeze our circuits, our reactors, um, chemical plants, uh, you know, platforms and all that stuff. Actually, I, I don't know what this building here is, to be honest. It'll even freeze our furnaces, which is crazy. Uh, anyway. Heat is generated by a heating tower, which burns chemical fuels that can be made locally or the nuclear reactor that require or that requires imports from Nalvis. The heating tower is interesting as a burner because it's more like the reactor. It continues to consume fuel even at max temperature, as well as heating. This can be a good way to get rid of anything burnable, which means it can also be very useful on Gleba, which is the uh, uh, like life planet, the the organism plant, organic plant, whatever. Um, both the heating tower and the nuclear reactor are heat sources. They spread heat to adjacent entities, but they only need to get the entity up to 30 degrees Celsius for it to thaw. This means that in some places like outposts, going for higher temperatures is a waste. So that's one of the reasons we added the ability to read the temperature of heat sources and control them with circuits. That's awesome. Heat sources... Oh, oh wait, no, wait, that's actually insane! The fact that you can read heat sources now gives us, like, a way easier way to automate, like, reactors and stuff. Because we can have it only insert fuel once it gets below a certain heat threshold. Which is... That's, that's cool! That's insane! That's gonna make building uh, nuclear reactors, like, way, way easier. Um, that's, that's super cool. I know that change seems minor, but that's gonna change, like, simplify making reactors and all that stuff. Efficient. Uh, way easier. Heat sources only being able to warm adjacent buildings that touch them or adjacent things that touch them is very limiting. Instead, you can use heat, bi heat pipes to move that heat around to all the entities adjacent to connected heat pipes, including diagonally. Every entity that needs heat also consumes heat. The effect is minor per entity, but can result in a lot of heat loss over long distances. So sometimes you want a hotter heat source so that the heat can travel further. Heat pipes and heated buildings would melt the ice. So to protect that ice keeps uh, to protect the ice that keeps you floating, you can place concrete or refined concrete as an insulator. In practice, this just means that most entities can't be placed directly on ice. We don't actually turn the icicles. <laughs> wait, we don't actually turn the ice tiles into ocean anymore. Okay, so that answers my earlier question. That used to be a mechanic, but it was too annoying to deal with when you try to build in an already heated area. The ice pipes can't go underground or under ice, so you need to route the belts and pipes around them while building. Often this means a machine will need to access the belts, pipes, and heat, but all the belts and pipes also need access to heat, and this can lead to some nice little puzzles and some very interesting builds. Yeah, this is going to make any kind of automation here, like... Ridiculous, because you're going to need to route heat everywhere. Unless you have, like, your furnaces active all the time. And there's this whole heat generation set up to uh, spread heat around, I guess, this entire factory. Oh, yeah, I wonder if trains freeze. Trains probably freeze, right? Interesting. By the way, that choppiness is just the video. Um, yeah, I guess bots don't freeze, huh? That would that would be insane if it did. Huh. There's this power production. Wait, so yeah, how does solar work on this planet? Because it said the star was very far away, so it's like it's permanently night, right? I don't feel like you'd be able to rely on on solar. Plus, I mean that's so space intensive, you probably just wouldn't want to do that. You just would rely on solid fuel burning from the oil that you can pump from the ocean, right? So that on loop? Yeah, it's on loop. That's cool, though. That is, that's pretty freaking cool. So, Aquilo is notably lacking in basic resources. On other planets, you can land with nothing and build your way to another rocket. On Aquilo, if you land with nothing, then you can do nothing. Okay, but what do you have? Your resources are solar, which works at 1%. Okay, uh, ammonic, or, uh, ammonia, coal so, ammonia coal solution from the ocean directly, crude oil from resource nodes, lithium brine from resource nodes, which are, which is, I'm assuming that green gas, um, fluorine gas from resource nodes, which is that blue gas all the way on the right. Solar output is truly pathetic. Only 1% of Nalvis 
You need some solar panels to kickstart your first few machines, so efficiency modules go a long way to speeding up that process. Ammonia cool solution can be gained via an offshore pump. With a powerhead heated chemical plant, you can split the ice and ammonia. Ice can be melted for water, which is necessary for, or which is needed for any power beyond the pathetic solar. It's also useful to extend your iceberg. Ammonia can be crafted or used with crude oil to make solid fuel, or combined with solid fuel to make rocket fuel. Crude oil can be collected with a pump jack in a few places where it floats up from the ocean depths, depths, and it can be combined with ammonia to make fuel or refined for the usual way, which can result or be useful to sink. Oh wait, be a useful sink for excess ice and water while also making fuel. Also note, it's an animated resource now, even on now. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yay, yeah, you can see that. It's actually like bubbling like tar. That's cool. It's an animated resource now, even on Nalvis. Lithium brine floats up to the surface in some spots and requires a pump jack. It's used to make lithium, which you need for a variety of things, including the planet's science pack. Fluorine gas bubbles up into some places, and this also requires a pump jack. Fluorine is used to make coolant, which is an essential part of this planet's industry. Cryogenics. Coolant is used in a few things, but initially, it's only used for Aquilo's science pack, the cryogenic science pack, which is made in a cryogenic plant. Okay, that is... That's a pretty sick animation. <laughs> I love it. It, like, lowers it down. Oh, that's super cool. Interesting. Oh, that's, that's cool as hell. Cryogenic Plant is a powerful 5x5 five five structure with a base crafting speed of 2. It doesn't have base productivity because it deals a lot of looping recipes. But it does have 8 module slots, so extra productivity modules can be used for the recipes that support it. Oh man, I love these art things that we get. Because you can see, like, in their brain, this would, like, be rotating around, maybe. Or, like, you know, th these, these liquids would just be pumping into this big chamber or same kind of concept here except with different things filling up with liquids or gases even more showcasing that and then this and we end up with this final product that's got like you know kind of the tubes filling up with gases from you know uh these three and then uh this open hatch design from from that one and then yeah it looks like a a, a crazy flying saucer with a bunch of pipes out of it super cool uh, cryogenic plant line. All right. While the structure can use some chemical plant recipes, it's mainly focused on recipes that need cold temperatures and a lot of precision. Some examples are coolant, coolant, cooling. Okay. The cryogenic science pack, fusion power cells, quantum processors, and other late game items. Uh, quantum pro. Oh, we we can. Look. So this is a this is a recipe involving blue circuits. I'm assuming that's that might be coolant. These look like superconductors or something. Yeah, I have no idea what any is there. But the liquid on the inside changes based off of what it's produ producing, I would suppose. Uh, quantum processors are like the final tier of circuit. They need something from each of the new planets. They're used to make fusion reactors that you saw in F. Yeah, so that was a 420 update. Or not update, but the, the leak. Not leak, but the teaser that we got. Quantum processors are also need to make the final turret in the game, which is also unlocked on Aquilo. The railgun. Now that is a beast of a turret. Oh, come on. Please let us see it fire. Oh, it's charging? Yo! Let's hear that sound. Can you imagine, like, 30 of these just, just obliterating biters? Just the giant worms on Volcanus. <laughs> a such cool concept art, dude. Holy shit. Oh, man. It translates so well. I really like the color palette he used here. I wish... Oh, no. Because it changes with player color. All right. Man. That is that is so good. The cobalt blue really stands out against the green. That's wonderful. The intricacy of the machinery in the black and white looks so cool. Sorry. I'm... Totally nerd about this stuff. I play Factorio. You play Factorio. You clicked on this video. Um, <laughs> the turret has a 3x5 base. It has a fixed direction like a flamethrower turret, but the attack cone is narrower, narrower than 90 degrees. If you can only build in four directions, this would create blind spots, so you can build railgun turrets in eight directions. This is the first, like, octagonal uh, rotational thing that we can build. That I know of, at least. 
Oh my god, dude. <laughs> okay. That's pretty good. Oh, and you could build like super weird things with this thing because he's got inserters like on the uh, in between the degrees. On the uh, on the forty degree, that's crazy. There's also a handheld version that is very effective against demolishers, which are I think those are the worms, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this is on Volcanus, and yeah, this is the the big old big old bugs. I love it. I'm so hyped for that shit. Um, but that's not the main use for the turd version. What do you need the turd for? Well, I'll let you speculate. 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 Okay. Aquilo is a challenging but very unique planet. After spending a few hours getting absorbed into Aquilo's unique building patterns, it feels really weird going back to any of the other planets. By comparison, everything else suddenly looks so simple. It's a feeling that struck me after playing on my very first Aquilo gameplay prototype. But the same feeling hits me after every playtesting LAN we've done too. It's quite easy to accidentally underpower your base, which can, which can lead to a lack of heat and subsequently freeze half your base. When this happened to you, I invite you to turn off alt mode and appreciate the view. The Frozen Factory isn't a site you get often, so enjoy the moment. I know you've been getting unreasonably excited for the re release of Space Age, but as always, keep your cool and comment in the usual places. My god. I wish I had been making videos on this stuff uh, more, but I'm I'm so hyped for this uh, <laughs> this Factorio DLC, dude. I've been I mean I, I I'm not crazy on Factorio hours, right? I've got you know 500 recently reset my achievements, all that stuff. Just for for some funsies, uh, I'm I'm trying to make a YouTube series where we are playing through the vanilla game. So if that gets uploaded before the DLC comes out, then it does. If I'm not done with that video before then, then it probably won't be. But anyway, thank you guys for joining me on this new Factorio update. I hope you have a wonderful day and are as hyped as I am, and I will see you guys next time.